Hi, what's up? It's Kim here. Today we're going to jump right into a modeling example in our studio for multiple linear regression with real estate prices pulled real time from my local city in Calgary. This is an overview of the modeling plan and you do need to have some basic understanding of statistical analysis before watching this. So first we'll check for multicollinearity and then use stepwise to find a reduced model for better fit. After, we'll perform partial F-test and individual T-test to add interaction terms and then higher order before turning up with a final model. After we get our final model, we will check assumptions. The following assumptions that must be met are linearity, independence, equal variance, normality, and then outliers. If any of these assumptions are not met, will perform a box cox transformation. All right, so wanted to kick things off with our studio. This is the interface or this is the program where a lot of the R code is written out and where we can do our modeling. So this first line here is just filling in the libraries that we'll need to actually perform some of the functions that we'll need to do later on. Now this first step is reading in the Excel or CSV file with the data frame that was already prepared showing price information and all the other variables. Here I wanted to actually filter out anything that was under $700,000 in price and this is what the data frame looks like just as a overview output. So it's got the actual address, sector, price, community, age, size, number of bedrooms days on market, walk score, lot size. So some features associated with the house as well as information that was pulled from the real estate site. Now this is a box plot showing the statistical information of the price listings broken down per sector. It's a good overview to show which sector has attributes associated to price. To me, it looks like in the Northwest, it's got the higher price on average listed. And these are box plots inside violin plots of the different communities that I'm specifically interested in. Just as an example here, it looks like Hillhurst on average is lower than communities in Capitol Hill or Altador. So this code here shows the main effects and this is essentially all the variables that was listed in the data frame up top put into a model and there's no specific choosing of which variables stay in or which stay out. This just has all of them in one model and that's what we'll start with. So this is a pair plot showing all the independent variables. This is what can be used uh, as a supplement to seeing if any of the independent variables are correlated to each other. So here I wanted to check for outliers and using a method called Cook's distance, the threshold is 0.5. So we would check to see if anything is over 0.5. And it looks like we don't have anything that's over 0.5 or no outliers because the highest that shows up is under 0.1. So again, this is the main effects model with all of the variables that are included right now. Pulling a summary of the main effects model, we can see here as a little cheat sheet under the p-value if there are any variables that are insignificant or any variables that we would not want to keep. And how do we tell that? We tell that by looking at the p-value. And if it's over 0.05, as a rule of thumb, you would take that out or deem it insignificant. So here it looks like age is insignificant, number of bedrooms is insignificant, and the days on market is insignificant. R squared stands for 65% of the variances can be explained by this model, which isn't too bad when you start off. So the first step is to check for multicollinearity. Multicollinearity involves looking into whether the independent variables are correlated with each other. And how do we tell that? With this VIF diagnostics test, if anything is a one, or if any VIF value is over five, then you would have an issue. But it looks like in this main effects model, none of them are correlated, so we're good for that. Now I'll do something called stepwise regression, where if you look at the code here, it's a very simple line, just one line where we put in the model, and it actually is able to take out any of the variables that are insignificant, and we wind up with a model with the significant variables that we want. So what we end up with is actually this reduced model without age, number of bedrooms, 
and days on market. Then we'll do something called a partial F test to check that the reduced model can be used and proceeded with compared to the full model. And how do we know that? If the p-value is over 0 0.05, it means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis that those variables that were dropped are insignificant, which means we can definitely drop those variables. So with that, we move on to checking for interaction and applying this formula where we take all the variables that are significant and then put a higher order two, it builds a full model with all the different permutations of variables having an interaction term. So it looks something like this, where you've got all the variables that are singular, and then you've got the interaction terms or all the different combinations of variables. So looking at this again, looking at the p-value, we see some that are insignificant and we see some that are significant. So out of that, we'll draw what is significant for the interaction terms. And if there is an interaction term that is significant, but the independent variable in it perhaps here shows that it's not significant, we will still keep the independent variable. So we end up with actually just keeping two interaction terms. So doing another partial F test or ANOVA test to make sure that we can drop those interaction terms, we wind up with a p-value of over 0 0.05, which is 0.113. So again, we can confirm that we can use this model that was dropped with all those other extra interaction terms. So now just doing a summary of our latest model so far, just want to check that everything is significant. So we've got the sector, we've got size of square feet, number of bathrooms, walk score, lot size, and then an the interaction term with number of bathrooms times lot size and sector times size. And it looks like here that sector and size, none of those interaction terms for this dummy variable are significant. So we would actually drop that. So now our better reduced interaction model only has one interaction term, which is number of bathrooms and lot size. And do another ANOVA test to check, and it does pan out, which is good. So now we can move on, and this is just a pair plot with the price or Y variable plotted with the different individual variables that were kept. And it looks like on this plot here, so this first row is the main row that we would be looking at, it looks like most of them are linear, except for this one here. This looks like there could be a potential for a higher order term, and that is walk score. So looking at whether or not we would add higher order, we would try that out. So the process for this is to apply a higher order term, and out of the pair plot, I picked walk score to apply a higher order term. And pulling a summary of this new model with higher order term, it looks like it would be significant to keep because there's three stars and it's much lower than 0 0.05. And what's not shown is that we have gone through and added more higher order terms for walk score, but after to the power of two, it actually isn't significant anymore. And so we decided to just keep it at walk score to the power of two. Another thing to look out for is not wanting to overfit the model. Now we have a model with one interaction term as well as one higher order term. And then we'll do our assumption checking. So from the beginning, assumption checking included linearity and we would plot this out. It looks to the eye like there does seem to be a pattern. So that's something that may be cause for concern. Testing for equal variance or homoscedasticity. We can do a few things. So there's the Bruch Pagan test, and that's not higher than 0 0.05. It's actually lower than 0 0.05, which means that we can't um, fail to reject the null hypothesis, or we would reject the null hypothesis. And that would mean that it doesn't meet the condition of homoscedasticity. We'd also want to test for normality, so that could be using the Shapiro test or a normal QQ plot. Again, it's much lower than 0 0.05, so it looks like it's not totally normal. And with that, we know that some assumptions or conditions for a linear regression model are not met. So we'll apply something called the Box-Cox transformation. 
So with Boxcox transformation, it comes out of the mass library and using the Boxcox function, we can extract the lambda term and then transform the y variable in the model. The lambda that came out of the Boxcox is now put into this transformation in the price factor. Then we go on and use the same model that we had found in the previous steps. Now, after the transformation, it looks like our adjusted R squared goes up a little bit and that these terms are all significant and we can check for assumptions again. So checking for homeless testicity, it still doesn't look like it meets the condition of that. It looks a little bit better. Some improvement can be seen in the residual versus fitted plots, but it's still not entirely meeting it. We'll also check for linearity as well as normality. And as you can see from Shapiro Welk, again, some improvement. It looks a little bit more normal than before the box box, but it's still not met. So what does that mean then? So if we apply box box and it still doesn't meet the assumptions that we're checking for, then perhaps it just means that this model is not appropriate for this type of data or for this type of prediction. And we can look into some other methods, but the basics that are shown in this video shows the steps that you would take to produce and fit a linear multiple regression model. And then you can use that to predict certain things if the conditions are met. Thanks very much. I hope this was educational and informative. Let me know if you have any other comments or questions below.